If you're at the center today that's working on complex sentences, you're going to watch this screencast, take some notes that are all review, and then do a little bit of practice. Okay, so we're going to review simple compound complex sentences. We haven't done those since, oh, before break. We took a little bit of a break before that even. So uh, you might want to refer back to your notebook at certain spots, um, and this is just going to be a good little review. So we've got to know the difference between simple compound and complex. And so we've got to know definitions for them. What do they each include? And a simple sentence has one independent clause. And we know that an independent clause has a subject and a verb, and it expresses a complete thought. We could take two independent clauses and put them together, and then we would have a compound sentence. But there's a special way it would have to be punctuated. You'd have to have a subject and a verb with a comma, and a coordinating conjunction, and then another subject and a verb. And if you really wanted to impress your English teacher, I've told you that in place of the comma conjunction, you could use this special punctuation mark called a semicolon. Okay, and you should know those depending or those coordinating conjunctions. Those are our fanboys for and nor but or yet and so. And we've already taken a summative assessment over all of those. And then the last type of sentence, the one that we're really working on right now, are complex sentences. And they can have one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. So we're going to review what makes a dependent clause a dependent clause. Well, it's going to start with a subordinating conjunction. And we find them and put a box around them. And we know they're subordinating conjunctions if they're followed by a subject and a verb. If we find a subordinating conjunction that's followed by a, subord a subject and a verb, then we know that we have a dependent clause. Now I want you to take a second, pause the screencast, and go brainstorm and think of as many of those subordinating conjunctions as you can. Some of them start um, are the same as our prepositions. We had a lot that start with W, and I gave you a little hint to help you remember them. So I want you right now to write as many as you can, pause the screencast, and then start it again to check. So here's just a quick list. We know that there are a lot more. These aren't like fanboys where there's a set list of them. But we want to make sure that we know the really common ones that can also be prepositions after, as, before, until, since. And then that and so that are very common though and although, because, if, and all of our WH ones. So at the very least, I want you to write those down. All right, the next part says rewrite the, de the sentence below, moving the dependent clause so that it's a transition. The sentence says add a comma if the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence. Well, first I have to find the dependent clause in the sentence. So looking at my list up here, I see if is a subordinating conjunction. So my dependent clause is if the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence. Dependent clause is my subject and is is my verb. I've got a couple of prepositional phrases there at the beginning and of the sentence. So I want you to pause the screencast and I want you to rewrite the sentence and you're going to move the dependent clause so that it starts the sentence. And if it has, uh, and when you get to the end of that clause, after the word sentence, you're going to add a comma. So I'm going to pause, and then you're going to come back and check your answer. And your sentence should now look like this. I moved if to the beginning of the sentence. If the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, when I hit the end of that clause, I put a comma, and then I wrote my independent clause, add a comma. So the sentence is the same. The meaning is the same. All that changes is the structure. So now we're going to go to the inside of our booklet, and we're going to do a little bit of practice identifying some of these sentences and figuring out if they're simple, compound, or complex. So I'm going to do a couple with you, and then I'm going to ask you to continue working on your own. And so we're going to follow these steps. We're going to eliminate the phrases, circle coordinating conjunctions and box coordinating conjunctions, and label subjects and verbs. If the sentence is simple, compound, or complex, you're going to circle the uh, answer at the end. But I'm giving you a hint here that they're all complex. 
But our rule of thumb is we always look for compound sentences first, and then we look for complex sentences. And if it's not complex or compound, then it must be simple. All right, number one, chess, which requires skill and concentration, is a challenging game. My first thing to do is look for any phrases in there. I don't see any prepositions, and I don't see any infinitives. So now I'm going to go look for coordinating conjunctions. I don't see any of my fanboys. Those are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. So I know that this is not compound. So now I'm going to go look for a subordinating conjunction. If you need to, you can flip back to that first page that has your subordinating conjunctions on there. And I see this WH1, which, which requires skill and concentration. So I'm going to look for my verb first. What's the action? What's being done? Well, requires is to need something. So that's my verb. And I'd ask myself, what requires skill and concentration? Well, my subordinating conjunction acts like the, subord uh, the subject. So that's my dependent clause, which requires skill and concentration. Now, it would be really awkward, which refers back to this word chess. It would be really awkward to say chess, chess requires skill and concentration, is a challenging game. So that's why we, we use a little subordinating conjunction to act like a pronoun here. So now I know that this sentence is complex. My independent clause has a subject and a verb too. The independent clause is chess is a challenging game. Chess is the subject and is is the verb. So in this case, our dependent clause comes right in the middle and you can see that it's set apart with commas here. All right, number two, anyone who wants salad should order it separately. My first thing to do is look to see, do I any, see any phrases in there? And I do not. So next I'm going to look for a coordinating conjunction for and, nor, but, or, yet, so. And I do not. So I know it's not compound. So now I'm going to look for a subordinating conjunction. And I see another one of those WH words, who. Who what? Who wants salad? So here I have to kind of think about where that clause ends. Who wants salad? In here, my verb is wants. And then I ask myself, who wants? And I see again that my subordinating conjunction acts like the subject. So who wants salad is my dependent clause. That makes the sentence complex. So what's left over is my independent clause. I could take that dependent clause out and it says anyone should order it separately. Anyone is my subject and should order works together to be my verb. Number three, the puppy that is sitting in the corner seems very shy. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for any phrases and I see in is a preposition in what? in the corner. Now I'm going to look for a coordinating conjunction and I don't see any so I know right away the sentence is not compound. So now I'm going to look for a subordinating conjunction and I see that. That is the subordinating conjunction. It's on my list over here. That. So I'm going to put a box around it that what that is sitting in the corner that's my my whole dependent clause and my verb is is sitting so i'd ask myself who is sitting or what is sitting and i see again that my dependent clause or my subordinating conjunction acts like the subject so there's my dependent clause that is sitting in the corner again that refers back to the puppy but it would be really awkward to say the puppy puppy is sitting in the corner. So we use a, a conjunction that's going to act like a pronoun. And so because I found a dependent clause, I know the sentence is complex. What's left over then, the puppy seems very shy is my 
independent clause. Puppy is the subject and the puppy seems. There's my verb. Number four. What Dr. Chan said has started to worry me. Oh, this is a really tricky one. I'm glad we're doing this one together. All right, so let's see. I'm going to start by getting rid of my infinitive. I see to worry. Now I'm going to go look for a coordinating conjunction, and I don't see any. So now I'm going to go look for a subordinating conjunction. I'm going to get my list out and see what word in the sentence is on this list. And I see a WH word, what. So that's my subordinating conjunction. What, what, what Dr. Chan said. So in this clause, I can see that I've got a verb said. And I'd say who or what said, Dr. Chan said. So that's my dependent clause. So I know this is complex. Now what's tricky about this one is if I go to look at my independent clause, well, you don't really get into this in seventh grade. Next year in eighth grade, you'll look, really look at like what is the dependent clause doing in the sentence. And in this dependent clause, it's acting like the subject. What Dr. Chan said, and here's my verb for that, has started to worry me. So I'm not too, too concerned about that right now. What I'm really concerned about you is being able just to find, be able to identify these dependent clauses. Um, but this kind of gives you a little bit of a lead in into what you're going to do next year in eighth grade. All right, number eight, or number five, bonus points will be awarded to whoever turns in the assignment early. All right, so I see a preposition in the assign in the assignment and to whoever. Now I'm going to look for any coordinating conjunctions. I don't even see a comma in this sentence, so I know right away that this is not compound. So I'm going to look for my subordinating conjunction. My subordinating conjunction is whoever, it's that WH word, whoever Whoever what? Whoever turns in the assignment early. So now I gotta find my subject and verb to make sure it's a dependent clause. Looks like turns is my verb. So who turns? Here my subordinating conjunction again acts like the subject. So this is a complex sentence. So I'm going to ask you to go try to do the rest on your own, and then when you're done, come back and check the screencast for your answers. All right, for the sake of you just checking your answers, I'm just going to go through and show you what the dependent clause was. So in this one, it's who is my subordinating conjunction, who was a calm player, was should be the verb, and who should be the subject. In number seven, the dependent clause or the subordinating conjunction is when, another one of those WH words, when she was only five years old. Was is always my verb. I found that pretty quickly. Who was? She was. So that's what you should have labeled for your dependent clause. Number eight. Again, I see another one of those WH words. Once you start recognizing them, it makes it so much easier to find them. Whether the media center has any books about volcanoes. So in this one, media center is the subject and has is the verb. Number nine, unless the weather improves, the trail ride will be canceled. And this one, we didn't have it on our list. I'm going to go back and add it right now until, oh, I did have until, my bad. Until, or I'm sorry, unless, unless is one I want to add to my list. Unless the weather improves. So unless is the subordinating conjunction, unless the weather improves. So weather is the subject and improves is the verb. And we can see that this one is acting like a transition. We see a comma here. So this is one that acts like a transition. And then the last one, another one of those WH words. If you're getting good at recognizing it, it should make it a lot easier to find. 
which is about opera.